Thinking of buying the Airfix Bristol Blenheim? Find out what's in the box here on Gary Stuff. Hi there, I'm Gary, welcome to my channel and welcome back if you've been here before. Today I'm having a look inside the box of this, the Airfix 172nd scale Bristol Blenheim Mark IV. Now, if you're thinking about getting one and want to know what's inside, this is very much the video for you. If you're interested in the history of the plane and indeed what other kits might be available, that's coming up in the next video. And of course, if you've already got one and you want to know how to put it together, there'll be a video towards the end of the week showing you that. How are you going to know when all these videos pop up? Simple. Just subscribe to the channel, hit the bell, and you'll be notified of all my future videos as they turn up. And anything you like, of course, you can give it the imperial thumbs up on the like button below there because every like counts. And if you want to offer a bit more concrete support to the channel, you can do that through Super Thanks, through becoming a channel member, or indeed through any of my online partner programs. Now, if after watching the video you think, oh, I quite fancy one of those, and you haven't got a local supplier to support, then you might want to go to the FX online store. If you do that, click on the link below before you do that. It will take you straight there, and then at no extra cost to you, anything you buy there, a small percentage of that comes towards this channel to help future productions. Okie dokie, so that's enough of all this. Let's have a look and see what you get inside the box of the Airfix Bristol Blenheim Mark IV-F in one seventy-second scale. So here's the box of the Blenheim Mark IV-F. Um, Adam Tooby artwork on the front here of the uh, camouflage scheme here, the Coastal Command Scheme, with the terrifying eight bombs here. I can't remember what they're 20 pounders or something. Anyway, um, the white and black underside, which is really cool. I thought I always like that. I always like seeing that. Don't know why it just makes me giggle a bit, actually. Um, anyway, beautiful piece of artwork as always. Adam's a, a very fine artist. And um, the two schemes are marked here. On the side here, we have some CAD renders of the, here the engine. Here are the flaps and the wings and all that, and there are the flaps, the engine with the um, cooler vents open here. You can see the cockpit and so on and so forth. It's quite nice. And on, I always forget it's the other way around. On the other side, you have here a very brief summary of the aircraft here. The finished size, which is 185 mil long, 238 millimeters wide. And 158 pieces in the kit. Down here we have a bit more about the two schemes. One, 248 Squadron REF. And it's a number 68 Squadron REF in the night scheme there. Here we have the colour callouts for the two schemes. A and B scheme use all of those. Um, the A scheme additionally uses those, which I'm going to guess uh, 34 is probably yellow. 29 and 30 are the uh, camouflage green and, and brown. There's a, a thing here saying it's skill level 2. So look, if you've made a kit before, then you really shouldn't have too many problems with this. If you're absolutely brand new to the hobby, this is probably not what you should start off on. I would start off with something at skill level 1. Just something, just one kit, just to get used to the workflow again, as it were. But not difficult to make. And of course, it comes to the token for two flying hours. Now, if you're a member of the Ethics Club, here it says that, um, you can collect these flying hours and use them towards free kits in the future. If you're not a member of the Ethics Club, or indeed if you don't want to collect them anyway, please do consider cutting these off and sending them to Models for Heroes. Contact details for this very excellent charity are in the information box below. On the back is a bit more detail about the club. Um, it's better to actually just go. Essentially, it's the same things. You don't get an enamel badge anymore. 
um, you get a key ring with a like a, a an imitation um, what was it called remove before flight tag sort of looking thing but um, you don't get a free catalogue either I don't believe or maybe you do later in the year but I've never seen a free catalogue anyway you know club magazines you get discounts off of um, buying kits and so on and so forth check it out online it's a lot easier to do that or indeed check out my video that's also online so there we go that's the outside of the box let's have a look at what we get inside it okay so as usual with every airfix kit you've seen me do so far there's a big bag full of frames almost said sprues they're frames there's one two three four five six frames in here that i can see plus a transparent frame we'll have a look at that in more detail in a minute there is this instruction sheet, instruction booklet really, it goes on for quite a few pages. Again, we'll have a closer look at that in a moment. And of course the decal sheet. One thing I should point out on these boxes, and I don't know why they don't do it anymore, since they have to print them anyway, is there's some extra little um hints and tips about reading the instructions properly painting the small parts on the frame they call them sprues here they normally call them frames uh, you know all these little rubber bands and clips and painting and all these other things here all very good and hints and tips and all that are and there's more on youtube of course there is you're watching one um i don't mention my channel so that's a bit rough off really anyway we'll have a look at all those pieces in a bit more detail now naturally enough we start with frame a this has the upper surface of the wings um, the elevators i think and the tailplanes front fuselage sections rudder and bomb bay doors i'm guessing closed bomb bay doors and something i'll find out what those are later on no doubt maybe part of the cockpit Frame B, the lower half of the wing, two fuselage halves, primarily the larger part of the fuselage is um, the, obviously the front end, which has separate pieces. I guess so you can do the, the Mark 1 and the Mark 4. And of course, uh, the spars, and these are actually quite interesting. I, I guess, yeah, they go into there. Normally on um, a lot of AFITS kits, the spars go into the fuselage and then you sort of slot the wings onto them, but in this case, it's kind of more the other way around, I think. Frame C, um, engine parts, cowlings and so on. Undercarriage, a couple of bombs here, bits and pieces of gunnery, I think. Um, main wheels with a flat spot for waiting, which is nice. Flaps here and there. And some armament as well. Frame D, a few more bits of the engine. More bits of... Um, undercarriage doors different types of undercarriage doors and she's slightly different shape between the two which is interesting the uh, tiny little sort of 20 pound bombs or whatever they are you know 20 pounders um some guns uh, a pilot figure just the one pilot figure and i don't know what these are and this is maybe these are the hubs are they hubs for the front of the engine Oh, I'll find out what those are later. Frame E, um, obviously more undercarriage parts. Bristol used a lot of bits of undercarriage. They really did. Some bits of the interior of the cabin, pilot seat, propellers and so on. And frame F, uh, the back end of the engine they sold with the gills open or closed, radio gills. Some Yagi aerials, I guess radio aerials. The machine guns. And then the two designs of machine gun pack for the bottom of the plane. And finally, frame H uh, with the whole the front end of the plane in, in its glass. <laughs> lots and lots of glass up here. So that's the cockpit, the nose area, the bottom of the nose area, side windows, um, gun, yeah, gun 
turrets and some old landing lights. Have a bit more of a closer look at this plastic, and I really like this. This is one of the best bits of plastic I've seen from FX for a long time in terms of the amount and depth of panel lines. Now, on a lot of planes that they make, these panel lines can be a little too deep and a little too wide. But these actually seem pretty good. These are going to be, they just err on the side of being easier to do, to pick out the panel lines and stuff like that. But the plastic looks really nicely molded. Um, there's a lot of, a lot of, uh, so I'll point them out to you. So what we call ejector pin marks, and these in, in the molds, these there's a there are places where pins sit in the mold. When the, the parts molded, they push against the mold and to help shove it out and get it out of the mold. These a lot of these show some abrasion around them, which means that the molders had a grinding tool in them to get them down and to you know, they'll probably sort of set up a bit more and just cleaning up those edges, which is a very, very good sign, I have to say. Um, the kit looks really clean, really clean. And it's uh, that nice sort of pale grey plastic that for some reason they don't seem to use anymore, that actually really is very nice to use and is very crisp. And I really don't know why they don't use it anymore. Yeah, the insides of the cockpits aren't crazily highly detailed. Um, yeah, I guess, I guess realistically, this should be a part, an extra part, and some photo etch in it. But yeah, I'm not exactly upset that they haven't done that. Um, this is a, maybe maybe I've got different parts for different marks on here. Maybe this is the Mark Four, and this is the Mark One, the shorter sort of mark one that comes sort of down like that and then this is the mark four with the much longer bit that goes out and then back which is what we're building oh we'll find out won't we uh, but again the parts look really nice and clean not massively detailed to be fair but clean very very clean Another thing I should point out here, um, I try, I'll try i try my best to film it. I, I don't know whether I'll better get it because I've got like a, a decent macro lens on this. That's probably about as good as we're going to get. If you can see whether the feed comes in here into the part, you can see how the feed kind of there's there's the, the line of the part and it's almost like it just touches the part but on the other side to get the volume of plastic through the feed actually overhangs this is i think it's called undercutting or something like that so essentially the plastic comes in from underneath the edge of the part why i get excited about that well, I'm excited about it why i'm pleased to see it i'm reasonably excited is that these are considerably easier to remove and keep the edge clean because if you've got a part that actually goes right into that edge you've got to clean out this whole bit here and you risk getting chunks taken out and things like that this is a lot easier to maybe just to sort of clip off here and then take some nippers quite close to that edge you'll get that leading edge still sharp and then all you've got is a tiny bit it's only a bit here just to file down. You don't have to do any filing actually on the front surface of the wing. And that, I love to see that because that makes my life a lot easier. And you don't see it on that many kits really these days. Anyway, there it is. Now, having said I love the moulding, um, I then look at this frame, um, frame D. Incidentally, Airfix are calling at this time, Airfix are calling this Sprue D. I don't know if we can get a. Yeah, there we go, that should see it now. Sprue D. Um, 
Now they would call this frame D. I don't know actually where the feet ah yes. Not see normally you, you in the middle of a frame. I'll just come out of this for a bit. Because this is quite interesting. It's happening on QI. Quite often on big frames you'll see there's a big injection point here that sort of sticks up and that some people say that that bit is the sprue and then this is a frame and then these are feeds or feeders or whatever. Um, on this piece you haven't got one but you can see these little breaks here and here. Now what I suspect is that they actually make a tool with these say these so I don't know if it's going to be these two or something or this and something else. So it's so make a, a feed a, a frame like this, a, a, a tool that does both, and in between there's a big chunk of of uh, plastic comes down, and there's feeders here and here that sort of allow the plastic to flow out from this sort of central one or two, normally one point. <laughs> and then what happens is it comes out of the mold and it just sort of snaps off. The, the bit in the middle goes to recycling and, and then these can be packaged in, in the box size, if you see what I mean. So that's kind of, kind of, I get interested in this. So I'm sorry sorry if this is a bit weird and a bit boring, but anyway, I, I like this, this sort of thing. Um, returning to our frame, um, Having said how lovely the other ones are moulded, this one is a bit ropey. So I'm not entirely sure what this stuff is here. There's only one aircrew figure, which on a plane like this is a bit pants, really. Not that brilliantly uh, formed. And with this strange overflow kind of thing here. It's very odd. Um, yeah, but when you see on, on the frame on the, these f feed galleys here you can start seeing these bits of flash and you think yeah that's going to come out in some of the parts or it's some of these feed points are going to be a bit wider than they should be but actually it's not too bad I mean the control columns okay here's this guns all right these uh, supports from the middle of the engine these seem to be modeled okay yeah, the odd thing were these little tiny little things. I don't know if I can get a better. Sometimes if you go to a wide angle, you can actually get closer in, depending on the lens. <laughs> I'm actually, <laughs> don't look like it, but this this is actually now about like five cent, four four centimeters from the front of the lens. So I've got to be a bit careful. I'm not entirely sure this. I think. What I think they are, are sort of propeller bosses to go into the middle of the propellers here. You can see they've got holes in them. I think maybe they fill up those holes and it's a little... Because on, on other marks, maybe they had a spinner. I don't know. We'll find out when we have a look through the instructions. Um... Uh, yeah, see some of these, some of these parts the a, a bit the feeding is a bit chunky. It's going to make life a little more tricky to take things off cleanly. Uh, the other thing I don't like, I really don't like, is when the feeds go into the middle of the propeller blade like that. And then this one, it really is right in the middle of the propeller blade, and it's going to take some work to get those flat and looking good. If we look at the uh, plastic frame, the clear plastic frame, it's all very nice. It all do seem nice and clean and clear. No major scratches that I can see. Well, there's some, something in this a little bit. Um, yeah, they look good. Now, there is a lot of glass on this kit. I mean, a lot of glass transparent parts I should say the aircraft it was glass or perspex or whatever so if well certainly if you're spraying it you've got to get a masking set or yeah because even making your own masks for this thing will take you a week I'm sure um, 
so get yourself a masking set I, th I think i've got one for about three or four pounds or something online really it relatively inexpensive doing all these turrets there's a bit of there's a bit of uh, marks on this turret here not, not completely clean there it's not great it's sort of, sort of scratched and in, in inside just point it out sort of carefully here and here it's not, it's not the plastic is scratched a bit uh, anyway we can use that one instead they are optional which one you go for they're okay it's, it's fine it's not bad the connection parts again these are going to be you know they're really the way these are done these injection points here are done really close to the edge of the framing of the glass so if you you don't cut that really well it's going to so take out a chunk there and you're going to have a bit that you can't fill because it's, it's glass remember that the plastic of these clear frames is a lot harder than the plastic of the gray frames the gray frames as well as including gray pigment um, often include softeners and plasticizers and things like that that allow you to cut these parts really quite accurately these are relatively brittle so probably a good idea to get us take some of the frame off first isolate the whole thing and then very very carefully either with some really good nippers take these off or maybe with a very very fine saw but really carefully because otherwise it's just going to crack and it's going to be a crack that goes straight into the glass because there's really not a lot of room there to play with um, it would have been better to have like a an elbow there so that the injector feed comes from directly below or or an angle even rather than directly sideways because that's not great but anyway that's that's the way kits are quite often that's just the way they are but the parts themselves are lovely and clean apart from that instruction sheet pretty typically fx uh some basic information and some basic history here in English, French, German, Spanish, and Swedish. Um, some basic assembly instructions, a decoding for the various icons that they use, and then the main instructions themselves. Um, the sort of angle view shaded means it's relatively new. Also, you'll notice that there's bits like in, in red. So here, attach the spar. In the next frame, you can see that's where the spar fits because it's in red. That's what you've just done. Like the the undercarriage legs or mountings are here. They go in and that's where they should end up. So that's really actually quite, sometimes that's really useful um, to see where something should end up rather than you know, having to guess where it should end up. Um, transparent parts are pale blue. In this kit, these instructions, I should say. Um, everything looks relatively straightforward. Engines never are, but you know, these these radial engines always seem to have like three parts to the shroud of the engine. That's just the way life is with these things. I think um, there's not really another way of doing it. I don't imagine. Otherwise, they do it. There's a lot of variety here of different designs of uh, the engine and whether or not the gills are open or closed for the radiators. So that's kind of nice. Uh, as I say, you've got options for the up or down um, position of the turret, I guess. Oh yeah, there you go. Those, those tiny little things, they do sit right in the middle of the propeller. <laughs> there we go. And then there's two schemes, the layouts and two schemes. The first one here is an aircraft of 248 Squadron, Coastal Command in 1940. This is the classic RAF daytime scheme with matte dark earth, matte dark green, and the black and white undersides. Uh, a nice scheme. And then the other one in the kit is Max Aitken's aircraft from number 68 squadron 
um, in the all over nighttime scheme, black night time scheme, which is kind of cute, and kind of menacing at the same time. Um, I'm not sure which scheme I'll go for yet. We'll see. And then the decal sheet, which is really quite um, concise, let's say. So common stencils are here. The stencil says something, I guess that's the, the instrument panel, upper surface, round doors, uh, walkway, and a few, little, there are some white things here. The 248 Squadron aircraft, daytime one, these are the parts you need for that. And then the nighttime all over black one from 68 Squadron. These are the markings for them. There's very, very little in the way of stencils to go on. Um, that's what, 24 decals in, in total to cover essentially two types of plane. So a very basic set, but still very sharp and very well coloured. So in close up you can see these really are very, very crisp, very sharp. This here is a propelling pencil lead that's half a millimetre. So you can see some of these, this lettering is absolutely, that's not even half a millimetre at all. Absolutely beautiful. Very crisp, very clean. There it is then. Actually it looks a nice little kit. My only concern is going to be the Junction between the fuselage and the, back, the rear fuselage and the front fuselage and the wing section. That's going to have to be absolutely spot on, otherwise, there's going to be all sorts of troubles with that. And getting the glazing over the nose all to line up could be a challenge. But other than that, I don't know, it looks pretty straightforward. It's a skill level two, so it shouldn't really be that difficult. Now, if you've enjoyed the show, and I hope you have, please do remember Imperial thumbs up on the like button below. And if you want to catch up with any of the future videos, so like the history video, the build video, or indeed any of my future videos, please do subscribe to the channel, hit that bell, and you'll be notified when any and everything in the future is released. Thank you so much for watching. Have a great time, and I will see you soon, I hope. Take care and goodbye.